Hi everyone, let's take a look at two examples of problems in which we are going to determine the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing and then determine the locations of the relative extrema. The first one we have here is a rational function. Now some things to keep in mind when you come across different types of functions. With a rational function, this one in particular, there is some place that is, it's not ex existing. So we know x cannot equal 0 in this case. So that might be something we want to keep in mind. Another thing we could do is maybe rewrite this function. Remember, we can, of course, put each term in the numerator over the denominator and rewrite it. So let's rewrite it as x squared plus x raised to the negative 2. It might just make finding the derivative a little bit easier. So as we go ahead and find the derivative, we get 2x and then minus... 2x to the negative third, so I'm going to rewrite that as 2 over x cubed. And remember we want to find where that derivative is equal to 0 so that we can determine the location of our critical numbers. Of course, critical numbers are also going to exist where the derivative does not exist, which in this case would be 0 because of that x cubed in the denominator. But remember that from the original function, 0 was not in the domain in the first place. So it really cannot be a critical number if it doesn't exist in terms of the domain to begin with. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's go ahead and solve this. I'm going to add the 2 over x cubed to the other side, do a little cross multiplying. I get that 2x to the fourth is equal to 2. So divide both sides by 2, I get x to the 4th equals 1, so x has to equal positive or negative 1. So those are my critical numbers. So from here we're going to do our number line analysis, and I am going to include the fact that x is not allowed to equal 0, only because if you think of the original function, we know there's going to be an asymptote there. And we all know weird things happen at asymptotes. So it might be beneficial to include 0 on our number line just in case. So let's go ahead to the next page and do that. So I had 1 and negative 1 as my critical numbers. And I am going to put 0 in there. Okay. And there's positive 1. So remember, we are doing a number line analysis on the derivative. It's at negative 1 and positive 1 that my derivative equals 0. And I'm going to put an x here at 0 because, remember, 0 was not in the domain to begin with. So we want to substitute into our derivative. Let me write that down for you really quick, just as a reference. So if we start by picking something less than negative 1, like negative 2 or negative 3, substitute into the derivative, we get a negative answer. If we choose an x value in between negative 1 and 0, substitute into the derivative, we get a positive. And definitely try these on your own to make sure you're understanding why it's either positive or negative, please. Substitute something in between 0 and 1, perhaps a half. We get a negative there. And then finally, something larger than 1, we get a positive. So remember that what we had talked about with the test for increasing or decreasing functions, that the sign, the S-I-G-N sign of the derivative, tells us what's going on with the original function. So we know the original function is decreasing first, because that's, we know the derivative is negative. Then it switches to increasing, then decreasing, then increasing. All right, so let's lay out the intervals on which this function f is going to be increasing and decreasing first. So it's increasing on the interval from negative 1 to 0 and 1 to infinity. And it's decreasing on negative infinity to negative 1 and 0 to 1. Now, depending upon the textbook you use, a little side note about these intervals of where it's increasing or decreasing being open intervals or closed intervals. 
Textbooks seem to disagree on that. I personally always do open, really because it's easier. We know that concavity, when you get to that, will always have to be open intervals. And since there's really no agreement on the increasing, decreasing part, you might as well do open because then just do open for everything. Okay, so just a little note, depending on the textbook you're using, you might see them using closed intervals for where a function's increasing and decreasing, and that's okay. Even on the AP exam, we do not get hung up on whether intervals of increasing or decreasing is, are closed or open. One thing, though, because remember this had an asymptote at zero, right? That has to be open if it's an asymptote. All the more reason to just always do open, because then you won't mess it up. Finally, let's lay out where we have relative max min points. Well, this one's kind of interesting. We do have minimum points. We got one at negative one, and we got one at positive one. But there is really no maximum. A lot of people would look at this and say, well, there's a maximum at zero. Well, not really, because remember, that was an asymptote. So it can't have a maximum on it if it was an asymptote. So this one only has two locations at which we have relative minima. The next example we're going to look at is a piece function. But we're still going to approach it the same way. We're going to start by finding our derivative. So derivative of the first piece is 2x, and of the second piece is negative 1. So remember, we would then set our derivative equal to 0. So if we set 2x equal to 0, obviously we get 0. Now another thing you want to make sure of, make sure it's in this interval, because if by chance it was not, we cannot use that as a critical number, but it is, so that is a critical number. Obviously, with the second piece, we cannot set that equal to zero and solve, so that's out. Now, another thing we'll need to consider, though, is, is there perhaps a critical number where x equals 3, because we need to see if maybe it happens that the derivative doesn't exist there. Remember, we need to check to see if the derivative from the left at 3 equal the derivative from the right. Because if there's going to be any place that the derivative does not exist, it's going to be at that split point. So the derivative from the left at 3, remember that would be using the 2x, we get a positive 6 there. The derivative from the right at 3 is negative 1. Obviously, they are not equal. Um, so we do have a critical number, therefore, at x equals 3, because that's where the derivative does not exist. All right, so that's one, one reason I wanted to provide you with an example with a piece function. Otherwise, we're going to do our number line analysis, just like we typically would. Uh, I'll do that on the next slide. So on our number line, we have 0 and 3. And remember, we're doing a number line analysis on the derivative. So it was at 0 that the derivative equaled 0. It was at 3 that the derivative did not exist. So we are substituting into the derivative. Let me write those down for you really quick. It's pretty short. So if we choose something less than 0, in that case, the first piece applies and we obtain a negative answer if we substitute in for x. If we choose something in between 0 and 3, we get a positive answer. We're still substituting into 2x, the first piece. Choose anything larger than 0, now you're talking about the second piece, and it's pretty much always equal to negative 1. So in terms of where this function is increasing and decreasing, We'll have that it's increasing on the interval in between 0 and 3. It's decreasing negative infinity to 0 and 3 to infinity. We will have a relative minimum at x equals 0. 
because that's where the derivative changes from negative to positive. Therefore, the original function is going to change from decreasing to increasing. We have a relative maximum at x equals 3. Now, that can be a maximum because the point did exist on the original piece function. It's probably just a cusp point or something. Um, but it can be a maximum, even if it's a cusp point. Um, so that's where our relative max is. And the reason for that is, since the derivative is changing positive to negative, that tells us the original function is changing, increasing to decreasing, therefore creating the maximum.